All right, here we go again. <laughs> Back again. Back again. So, uh, yeah, as I find in my life, um, things present themselves to me, things happen. And, and this is for all of us as well. Um, whenever we allow it, whenever we, uh, allow the flow to happen and we listen, you know, instead of, um, uh, having this knee jerk reaction or like, Oh, Hey, uh, you know, something is out or something has caught my attention and, Oh, I, I gotta, I gotta have that or have that instant gratification for it. We, we have a little bit more discernment and a cultivation of, ah, well, Yes, this this has piqued my interest, but uh, for whatever reason, it's it's not yet time. So uh, this this is one of these things here. <laughs> this is this is zigzag, and uh, the things he talked about here. It, uh, it almost as soon as he started talking, and, and I watched this one, I was like, well, obviously, <laughs> this is why, because my own personal experiences I've been going through. Uh, the things that he is talking about in this one, it's like, it's just so much mirroring going on, and, yeah, uh, my, my voice still is, is, is a little fucking fuckered up, so, if you can't understand some of my words, so be it, but, uh, Yeah, it's just, it's a very magical, mystical process whenever we allow this to happen. And, and then the things that we uh, come about and are presented with, they, they kind of like are uh, uh, wink, wink, nod, nod, and <laughs> poke, poke, uh, you know, reminding us, hey, pay attention to, to what you just fucking experienced here. There, there's something here. There's a... Uh, something that you need to integrate, even if we know, you know, that, that there's stuff that we need to integrate, a lot of times it, it's happening on so many levels and multi-layers that, uh, because of the construct that, that we are caught, um, entrapped, ensnared within, it's so easily, the design is to, uh, distract our awareness away from what's going on inside of us. So a lot of times we, we, you know, we just forget about what we experience, about what needs to be integrated. And then also later on, I'll skip a section here and we'll talk about the importance of this cultivation and uh, diving into the stillness. And also I just watched a, whew, my throat. <laughs> it's just a little dry right now. Uh, I just watched Activation Goads' newest, uh, latest upload, and I, I just want to say thank you so much for that, dude. Uh, thank you so much for allowing your heart to, to uh, you know, be expressed and be felt. And uh, I mean. It, so much goes like without words uh, with us. I feel like with a lot of us, um, instantly when, whenever I saw the title and I heard you start talking, like I, I knew exactly <laughs> pinpoint what you were getting at, where you were, you know, what you what you were expressing, and I've had like a bit. I've I've had that that what what the fuck you're talking about. Um, and it is a fucking game changer experiencing that, um, experiencing yourself on that kind of a level. And you could liken it to like a future self, and then like, uh, it, it, it's your, it's your origin self, like but the basically like the soul, uh, aspect of of your essence 
and uh, having the self that you're used to engaging meet this self and then like uh, both of you kind of meet in the middle and this is like the new, the middle ground that we have to uh, get used to I guess you could liken it to uh, and this is this is why we cultivate a certain level of uh, awareness and stillness of the mind and of the faculties that we're not really taught to engage or uh, encourage to. So yes, thank you brother for that. That was very beautiful. That was very beautiful. So yeah, we're going to go with this and uh, then I'm going to talk a little bit about one of my dreams and we'll see how deep we can go with that. A lot of times with, with dreams, once we start talking about them or once the memory sparks, then, then uh, you know a lot more of it comes back. So we'll see if that happens for me. Probably not because I've been... There's just a lot to it. Like I've been having these weird fucking dreams lately. It's like uh like lifetime dreams. I don't know if you guys have ever had those kind of dreams where you wake up and it's like okay, I've been asleep for this many hours, yet I just experienced years and years and lifetimes. <laughs> it's like what the fuck, dude? But it's also it's just a lot to integrate. So yeah, here we go. See, I had a dream, for example, right? And it's so funny how in my dream, everything was pretty busy. It was, and we, you know what it is? The consciousness of it too, because this is actually something that we're, you know, I talk about evolving your consciousness, uh, you know, being aware of certain things. And exactly, whatnot, but, awareness. Um, you know, in my dream, there was a lot of people. I was like, it looked like a mole, kind of, and, and I'm going up escalators. But as I was moving, <laughs> and I had this this uh, particular talk with the awakened brave also. Um, you know, I'm passing by, and I look to my left, and I see a demon type of individual, like in a squatting position, looking at me. And it was a female, and her eyes were all white. Um, I didn't get any negative like a, a vibe from it. You get what I'm saying? But in I also dream. Did, it looked so mundane. They looked normal to me yes. in my dream. Yes. Uh, where I looked at her and then, you know, I just kept it moving. And there were a lot of people around. But um, the one thing is, is that I, I became lucid in the dream and then I looked back again. And now I started to be like, whoa, you know what I mean? But why did it, why did it feel so mundane and so normal before I became lucid in the dream? That's that's very fucking profound right there, um, and that's something that everyone should should really um, dive down deep into, um, not just with the dream, but becoming lucid in your fucking life, uh, going about your day to day shit, and then going along with stuff, and even if you see something that seems you know, out of, out of the fucking norm or, or something that that should catch your attention, you know. A lot of times we just are so used to, to going about our, our fucking scripts or, or whatever the fuck ever we're caught up in. For a lot of people, for most people, unfortunately. And then it's only without the awareness of maybe the hindsight or looking back. Or if it's a dream state, you know, becoming lucid. Within any kind of state, becoming lucid. Recollecting back. Recollecting your yourself and realizing what you're actually experiencing. So yeah, there, there's a lot there with that, and uh, <laughs> we'll get into that. Um, but uh, I also kind of wanted to share a little bit of uh, a dream that. I, one of the dreams that I've had recently, <laughs> and this was like, this wasn't even, it's, it's so hard to put words to these things. 
this was like a uh, dream that it's something that had been going on for uh, a long time, like centuries. So it's like a century dream. Uh, I don't fucking know uh, the words put to it. I'm gonna share some imagery that that I can recollect, and uh, wherever that takes your mind, uh, so be it. But basically, um, the stream was brought about. Um, I was r reminded of it because um, he, you know, he said uh, the the demon person that he saw. So, uh, where to start? So essentially, I, the, uh, the, uh, taste of this dream was that it was a very old, um, memory. It was a very old happening that has happened to, uh, you could, you could say humanity. Um, and it's multi-layered, so I mean, a lot of it we do done to ourselves, and this is kind of like part of my integration of uh, understanding what this dream meant. <coughs> because kind of uh, one of the main key images that, that has stuck in my head is this uh, valley or crevice, and there was a jumping point, so there was like a... a a uh, peak here, and then a peak on the other side, and, uh, I can't make my finger, and, uh, it was a jumping point, and it was the first human, and I keep trying to recollect, like, was it the first human, or was it, like, the first human again, uh, yeah. hmm, it's interesting. And really contemplating about it, like I think it's so old that it's uh finally another human making this jump, and it's quite the leap of of fate, but also um just to be able to make this leap between the two uh places. And, uh, there's a lot of bones, um, a lot of, there's a spiral staircase of, of bones leading up into a, uh, I think it was kind of like a tree type area, like a tree fort kind of thing. <clears throat> don't recollect right now what was in there, but it was a, uh, some kind of a, I mean, this is just tapping into this, this deep level corruption that has happened, um, well beyond, like, the, the, the many cycles, like, this is the origin point of it, uh, the, the first seed, the, the first taste of it, the first allowance of it. And I don't want to go too dark or too too deep into like <laughs> all of this stuff, but so, some of the images that I remember is that um, there were safeguards set up so that the humans that <laughs> were corrupted by this, and there was there was zombie vibes and then also demonic vibes. So it was kind of like a possession. Uh, it wasn't zombified, as in. Um, The human form became like, uh, like it couldn't really think and just had like certain innate, uh, things that it, that it moved towards, but it was more like a, uh, yeah, like a possession. Uh, the human form was amplified, like, with, with the physical, uh, abilities. And then it just sought to, uh, further 
sink that corruption uh, into everything. So, uh, yeah, I remember one of the images is that uh, there were safeguards set up so that even with humans that uh, had this corruption, um, they, was, they were still stopped. And then I also remember being on a team hunting uh, these things, but then also having this, uh, <laughs> it was very much like fucking, uh, one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's movies, fucking Predator, dude, very much like that, and then, like, feeling like you are, you are hunted, even though you, you know, you're hunting these things, but it's like, you, you get in, into this situation and you're like, oh my god, no, I'm not top dog here, I'm not, I'm not the fucking hunter necessarily, so we gotta fucking rethink, reevaluate how, how we're doing this shit, cause we're the ones being hunted. Being preyed upon. So we gotta step up our game and get very fucking clear upon what what we're doing here upon the things that are going on inside and then you can see a little bit more clearly the things that are going on outside that's all I'll go into with that um what Ziggs was talking about with It it is a very interesting thing how how things that don't really make much sense at all whenever you, you know, pop back out of your dream and you think about it and you're like why the fuck was was I just going along with that but I mean also you know how many times do you do that in life and you think about things um, in in your waking life if you want to call it that that you're like why the fuck was I just, was I just going along with that that's, that's so stupid mundane and then once you gain a little bit of lucidity and you're able to look at these things whether whether it be within a dream or in waking life with this uh, level of lucidity and awareness you're like what the fuck is this <laughs> You're able to see kind of like the uh, the messages a little bit clearer. The pathways open up a little bit more. Kind of like, uh, you know, it's like in my, if I saw a demon, of course, like let's say in this 3D realm, <laughs> um, that's not an everyday thing you would see, so you would pretty much be shocked that you would see it. Uh, <laughs> it depends. Because a lot of times, whenever we have uh, certain things happen to us in life, um, it's that trauma factor that happens, and your body reverts back to a state where <coughs> it's like it's uh, protecting itself. Or you, or uh, it goes into a state of like, um, this isn't happening, or this isn't real. But like, we have to kind of uh, snap out of that. So I mean, you can go through things in, in waking life, and it will snap you into a dream state. But then uh, you got to wake up, otherwise, you know, you're going to be in a world of trouble. Or you're just going to continue being used and guided towards things that is not really helping or benefiting anyone. But in my dream, it felt so real. You get what I'm saying? There's certain people that I would meet in my dreams and I know them also like in the dream. I know them intimately. Like I know them so well. Yes. And then I wake up 
and I don't know who the fuck they are. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. So it's a pretty interesting thing how when you start to, you know, you get these memories and and it, it's uh, it starts to put you like you gotta re- like sit back and just really think about these things. See, it's it's so fucking weird because you have like it's like dream memories. It's like you have uh, certain reoccurring dreams, but it's like the things that are happening within those dreams. They're so uh, familiar. And, and it feels uh, very natural. Man. Whew. And, uh, this this is this is exactly what it's like whenever we take uh certain intense uh chemicals or plant spirit medicines we we are uh plunged into a state and then all of a sudden we have all these access points opening up and these memories opening up and we have all this familiarity opening up that that we forgot about momentarily and this is uh this is what it's like whenever uh you sort of engage things like this engage the subtle realms even engage uh, your dream realm on a, on a deeper level you'll start to dive into why you know these things are popping up what they th- these things really mean what they're really trying to tell you not even trying but what they are telling you in the moment with the feeling what they feel like whenever you're just in the dream going along with it what they feel like whenever you pop out and become lucid And what the message is there. And uh, slowly but surely, you you know, start to question, why is it that, that there's this barrier here between, like, this memory of being in these states or being in these dream states? And then the memory of, you know, being in the state that we're used to engaging in, in the waking life. Like, what is going on here? You start to, you know come back into this reality here and it's like the dreams don't make sense but in the dream it made sense totally you know um yeah i won't go too deep into that because that's something that i have to really (laughs) no but i mean continue to, to to dive into your dreams but also like these uh plant spirit medicines they help us dissolve these layers. And especially if you do strong doses and uh, potentially you're guided by a shaman or you're in a, a situation uh, or a ceremony. <clears throat> or if you're able to do it yourself, be your own shaman and be in stillness. You have uh, some kind of a cultivation of a, a meditation practice to where you know how to still your body, still your mind whenever these experiences are happening then you will gain the most from them from these experiences you will witness the dissolving happening between all these layers and barriers and so this kind of like connects back into the last video I just did like accessing the layers feeling to the layers this is what I'm talking about here the 
You don't necessarily need the aid of anything, but you probably do because uh, we've been so m fucked with on so many levels that having the aid of like uh, fucking the things that come from the goddamn earth, the mother and the father engaging with nature directly getting out of your fucking uh, your loop programs and going all the way in most people are going to need this kind of uh, medicine and, and healing So this is why I talk a lot about this kind of stuff, uh, even more so than the meditation. Than the meditation, but uh, that's that's the cultivation that 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 uh, springs forth because you realize that it's all a matter of focus and choice. Where you choose to put your awareness and focus. And navigating, learning, remembering how to get there. How to dissolve the layers. So yeah, I'll try to find... The other place I wanted to find here. And with my imagination, of course, I massage that area with that ball and I start to breathe into it. Close enough. And funny enough, doing that for enough, you know, attention and time into that, you'll start to see why you're even tense there. Start, certain thoughts start to come in. But this is the thing. This is why clearing your mentality and being in a, in, in a stillness is very important because you're able to, uh, you know, pretty much cloud out everything and just uh you, you're more clear toward what it is that's going on within you rather it's all right so exactly. let, let me give you an example if you're in a nightclub right and i'm trying to have a conversation with you it's going to be hard to talk to you because of all the loud music right um but then when the music is shut off and everything's silent i can whisper to you and you'll still hear me because it's very silent but in the nightclub i, I have to be screaming at the top of my lungs and it's still hard to for you to hear me because of the loud music and all the people dancing and screaming and all the, the chaos. So basically when you go into meditation, because you're, see these, your body is not screaming at you unless there's an, a serious problem such as, you know, uh, an inflammation, such as arthritis, when your systems are failing and you start to manifest that in the form of where you're getting, uh, you know, digestive problems or even cancer or, you know, fevers, whatever it may be. Now your body's screaming at you, but you don't want it to get to that point where your body's screaming at you because now you have a problem and you got to address it, uh, you know, differently. But your body is always trying to talk to you, but it's going to, it's kind of like whispering at you and it's whispering at you through mm. the meditation. Okay. And when you meditate and you, and you, you're able to be in the stillness. You're able to get the messages a lot clearer. Yes. You trying to figure this out in your busy life is equivalent to me trying to speak to you in a in a in a loud ass nightclub. You, it's hard to hear me. That's beautiful, you know bro. Saying? That's beautiful. Much appreciation for that. Accessing the stillness within, it uh, makes that connection clearer and you could say louder, but it's just, it's more accessible. This is the attuning process here, the focusing, the, the, the be, realizing what the focus really is, the focal point, the monad, being the eye of the hurricane, being the stillness and witnessing the things spinning around and uh, happening outside of you.
being able to choose where you want to put your focus instead of just being caught up. And a lot of times we we do just have to, you know, go go with inspiration, but we do so in the knowingness that, ah, oh, I'm I'm feeling this. We do this after the cultivation has happened. So we, we allow the inspiration to guide us. This is a guiding that's happening. We're not so much getting caught up uh, with an instant gratification and, and, and being pulled by things on the outside anymore as we uh, allow things to guide us and inspire us and then see where those things lead us because oftentimes they lead us into pathways and avenues that we didn't see coming and that's the beauty of it. Our mind catches up with what the heart is guiding us to. This is what's happening. Collectively, uh, the, the corruption that has happened in the mind is finally you know, coming back more and more. More and more of us. <laughs> Amore is coming back to the heart. Being guided by the heart. Okay. Card time. The froggy key words good fortune, treating others with kindness and compassion. Look for unexpected good fortune when the frog card appears in a reading. Frogs are a symbol of the force of water. A symbol of fertility in cultures everywhere. Uh, the ancient Egyptians depicted... I don't know how to pronounce that. Hikwit? Hikwit? Hikit? <laughs> the goddess of childbirth. With the head of a frog. Hindu folklore maintains that the frogs bring rain when they croak and that pouring water over a frog can break a drought. In Europe, the beast, the, I'm sorry, the best, the beastly, bestly known frog story is a fairy tale. Like, like that picture. When a young princess Lost her golden ball mm. in a pond. A frog offered to retrieve the golden ball if she would share her dinner with him. Let him sleep on her pillow and wake him with a kiss. Eager to have her toy back. The princess agreed. Once the ball was back in her hand, she ran off home. That night, the frog appeared at the castle, demanding she honor her word. She reluctantly complied. In the morning, she woke him with a kiss, which was the magical solution to a magical problem. The frog was an enchanted prince who needed the love of a princess to transform back into a man. That's pretty cool here. A magical solution to a magical problem. That's, yeah, that that's kind of the predicament we find ourselves in, isn't it? 
except that uh, the solution is within and uh, the transformation doesn't happen from uh, something or someone from without. It manifests first from a feeling within. And then that can take form in a manifestation without. So, uh, and this also ties back into love. Like, you, we, we are only ready, you know, for, for the kind and the intensity of love that we have integrated and, and, you know, the self-love. The love that we have a self, not just for ourselves, but for all. And a lot of times, you know, people have to go through several different partners to finally, you know, get a little bit of the puzzle here, a little bit of the puzzle there, lessons here, lessons there, before they finally realize, you know, what they need to do for themselves to really cultivate a deep level of appreciation and awareness to be able to, be able to honor that love within and without. So once again, this all ties back into the shamanics and awareness and integration. As within, so without. The inner work you do will manifest and be reflected back to you in kind. Deep love. Peace.